All right, we are back for day 19 of Advent of Code. Uh, as you can tell by the missing star and the uh, missing upload yesterday, I actually missed yesterday's Advent of Code, um, but uh, I will have to make that one up on a future day because today is day 19. And I'm currently doing this in the day 18 folder, I'm realizing now, but I'll just have to do it there. Uh, okay, a bunch of colors. Input looks like this. How many designs are possible? I see, we have a few different towels that we can work with. Um, okay, so there's two bits to this input. Um, oh, I see, and the question is how many, how many different ways, how many designs are possible? We can use these things. Okay, this is a classic dynamic programming problem. Um, uh, let's make this a set. Uh, I guess I'll just do it for like, sure. Um, I'll do it recursively again. Uh, no, this does not exist. Um, so, okay. Um, if, so if we're empty string, um, oops. For empty string, then there's exactly one way to do that. Otherwise, we can consider everything that is uh, possible um, if this string starts with this possibility. Um, yeah, I think we did this. Um, then we can do uh, results. So we're going to chop off this prefix, and then re recurse and solve that, um, and then yeah, and then cache as result. I think that just looks good. Um, and then now we do for l in s two. What's the how many designs are possible? Oh, just possible at all. So we're not counting. Okay, I bet part two is counting. Um, well. Okay, rank 124, yep, I was exactly right. No! The number of different ways you could make each design. Hmm. Yeah, I was right about this bit. Oh man, this would have been so fast if only I had it right. <laughs> um, hmm. I guess we try the sample input. Let's see what's going on here. 10. Well, that is not right. Oh, are there duplicates in this? Um, no, no duplicates, I think. Oh, shoot, the first part was was messed up. Um, wait, why is it messed up like this? S1? Wait, I, this is really confusing to me. Oh, shoot. Oh. There we go. OK. Oh, terrible bug. How did my part one solve? I actually have no idea. Well, there's our answer. 166. Oh, man, missed both parts. Uh, that, was, that was an unfortunate bug. Um, it cost me at least a minute. If I didn't have that, I would have been th at least 316, um, which still would have, which would have been like number 100. Okay. Um, I, I, I said at least a minute, so it could have been 
higher up on that one. Um, so that's definitely solvable, but also this is like an easy enough problem that is like solvable by the large language models. Um, so that, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so I guess I can go ahead and explain this. It, it's pretty funny that I like misread part one and actually wrote the solution to part two. Um, I think that it's like, there's similar difficulties of like implementation. Um, but yeah, so the, the problem here asks, we're given these, um, these towel combinations uh, of like different colors and we're given these target patterns. And the question is, can we make a given target pattern with some number of, of these? Um, so BR, WRR, um, we can use either the B uh, or the BR at the beginning. Um, I think, no, we can actually only use the BR because the W, like otherwise we don't have a way of using up the, um, the W here. So I think we use the BR and then we use the WR and then we use the R. Um, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, it, it has the example down here. I probably should have just checked that. Um, but yeah, so some of these are makeable, like you are, can be created and some of them cannot. And part one just asks how many of them can be created. Um, and then part two asks, okay, um, not only how many of them can be made, but how many different ways can you make them in? Um, and this is a fairly classic dynamic programming problem, um, which I solved again with uh, memoized, uh, uh, a memoized recursive approach, just because that's like the fastest to write. Um, but yeah, so um, basically what I'm doing here, so first of all, I have my regular pattern with caching where I check if something is not in the cache, only compute it if it is, and then store it in the cache and then return the cache value. Um, the actual way you compute this is fairly straightforward. Um, the number of ways to, to um, have a certain combo like this uh, is like for every prefix that this thing starts with that you like can actually use. Um, so num ways of this, oops. Uh, this is equal to the number of ways of, uh, because we can use the B, number of ways to make this, plus the number of ways to make, you could also use the BR, um, so the number of ways to make this, plus the number of ways, is there anything else we can use? I don't think there's anything else we can use. Um, yeah, so it's just it's just this. But in general, if like if we also had like a BRW towel, um, then, then we would also be able to do that, number of ways of just, just the RR. Um, and the idea is, is that this problem has a lot of like overlapping structure. Um, so when you end up computing this, you will likely end up having to compute these values as well if there was like a singleton R, which there is. So the fact that you can compute it just once and cache the result saves you from doing like exponential amounts of work. Um, and in, in fact, you saw that the answer here was, um, was very large. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, what we're seeing is something like, yeah, so like there's two ways to make a suffix like this, um, but then there are probably more. I, I'm starting at a random point, so it's possible that, yeah, okay, it's possible I end up with zero. Um, surely one of these has to be in here, given that we, uh, oh, I guess it doesn't have to be in here. It's possible that there's like some impossible bit earlier. Um, so that causes it to like not recurse all the way. Like for instance, if um, yeah, supposing that yeah, so if there's like no nothing that starts with a W, um, in our input, like maybe we only had R W and we had no nothing that starts with a W, then when we're actually computing number number of ways of this, we won't see any prefix that works. So this is just return zero early, um, and we won't end up caching anything like this. Um. Which, so I guess that didn't work so well when I was trying to check something random in the cache. Um, but yeah, uh, cache.items. I don't know, we can look at like a few random elements of the cache. Yeah, and you can see that these grow like exponentially fast and like, it's sort of in like a Fibonacci-ish style pattern. Like these are growing like basically exponentially fast. Um, but uh, yeah, that is the, that is the approach here for day 19. Um, yeah, so I misread part one and I saw how many designs are possible and I thought it was asking like this, how many ways can you make a design? Um, not realizing that this was a design. I thought like the design was the combination of, of these. Um, because again, like I'm, I'm skimming the question here. 
Uh, so I wrote this like from the get-go for part one. Um, I had a bug where I was, yeah, so why did that bug actually cause problems? Um, oh, oh, I see. Oh man, I got pretty lucky. Um, so the bug I had written was this. So initially I'm splitting S. So our, our input string looks like this, and it's got like two chunks to it. Initially I'm splitting it into the first bit and the second bit, and starting this in S1 and S2. And the thing, and then what I was doing is I was converting S1, because now we have all these commas, you need to like uh, split on the commas again. So, but the thing that I wrote by accident was s.split on the commas. Um, and because of that, I would get like the first few things just fine, but the very last thing in this list would instead parse as this entire string. Um, so I wouldn't actually, my, like it was not possible for my code to use the very last element uh, whatsoever. Uh, which is why I'm surprised that I solved part one okay. Um, maybe it's the oh I bet I bet it's the case that um, yeah. So let me get rid of this. this should make, let's make this list instead of set. Um, yeah, and then I guess we could just we could just look at the whole S one. Yeah, so I bet it's possible. I, I bet it's the case that um, this is makeable with no, it's not. Um, hmm. I was gonna say, if it's the case that this is completely makeable with everything else, um, then man, it's kind of hard to like actually look at this. Uh, oh yeah, okay, it is makeable with this. Uh, why is it not in the cache? That's kind of weird. Hmm. Well, anyways. Um, yeah, so the reason it didn't affect my part one output uh, is because part one is just asking about the number of things that are possible. And uh, so if I don't include this, as long as it's still possible to make all combinations like this, then this is not actually helping us make more things. It's It does change the answer to part two because it changes the number of possibilities, um, but it doesn't change what's possible because BRR and WW, WBW are both themselves valid segments. Um, so we can always make anything like this by just combining those two. So yeah, that was, uh, I assume that was not a guaranteed property to input, so I did still get a little bit lucky here. Um, but I also found the bug pretty fast, and I didn't leaderboard anyways, so I don't know. If I hadn't caught that, then probably, um, probably my split on part two would have been better, but my part one time would have been worse. I'm guessing my final time would have been pretty similar. Um, but uh, yeah, that is all I have for day 19 of Advent of Code. Um, I will see you tomorrow or whenever I get around to doing day 18. Um, I will definitely do it at some point this weekend if I haven't done it by then. Um, but I'm hoping I'll be able to get around to doing it before then. Um, but yeah, see you then.